Welcome everyone to the King of the Palace, presented by the New Palace Bowling Lanes here in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. I'm your host, Steve Bronchuk. And I'm Dave Matala. And on this episode of King of the Palace, Steve Fazant defends his title against Gary Casey Jr., the number four seed. We'll see if Steve has what it takes to climb the ladder to retain his title as King of the Palace. David, Steve looking forward to his matchup. Hopefully he defends his championship and reigns again as the King of the Palace. Let's get to the action. Okay, Gary Casey up on alley three. Ready to hold his first box. Gary, veteran candlepin bowler, out of here, out of the New Palace lanes. Head pin hit, right side quarter, leaving the seven pin for the spare. This is Gary's third attempt at the King of the Palace. His qualifying score this time around, 377. Pretty respectable coming out of the field. Oh. Just missed that seven pin for the spare. Just missed. Well, let's see if he can come back with the, the fill ball and get the 10. And he picks it up for the he 10. That time. Okay, Gary going on the alley two. David Gary, veteran channel pin ball. A couple leagues up here at the Palace. The New Palace Lanes. I believe Tuesday nights in the winter, maybe another night. No, Tuesday nights in the winter, but I'll tell you what, he loves competition, so any kind of tournament that is around, you can bet your name, his name's on it. Found the head pin again, found it again, leaving the three, six, ten with some wood. Looks like a, right at the, between the three and the six and shred split. That's where I would go with it. Let's see if he can't pick this up for a spare. Yes. Nice ball. Nice shot. Nice shot on alley four. You called it, David, he split it. Didn't even consider the wood when right after the pin. Very good start for Gary, Gary Casey. You got that right. Up now, the returning champ, Steve Pizant. He's looking to try to retain his title, going against a formidable opponent in Gary Casey Jr. Up on alley three, first ball. Oh! Wow. Tough hit on the right side, took out the half whist to right, along with the 10 pin. You know, talking with Steve, he hasn't bowled since the last King of the Palace tournament. Whoa, right by the head pin. He's going to need a big ball here to come out with a reasonable low. Hopefully a 9 or a 10. It's going to be difficult. Yeah, but... And he comes out with an 8. Considering all the factor of three pins down the first two balls, I think he'll take the 8. Yeah, I would too. Now he's gone up on alley 4. He's looking for that head pin pocket. He wants that head pin. Oh, Ooh, right, right side, side again. again. Steve was out of the Mohegan Bowl in Webster, Mass. Beautiful place since they've redone it. Okay, ugly six pin split lead. Gonna have to attack the head pin. Ooh. Missed it, missed the object, missed threw, the object. Threw it down the right again. Now he's got five pins up, scattered all around the deck. Oh boy, oh my goodness, to come out of this with a no, eight or a nine, he'll be happy. Yeah, let's see what he can do. Ooh. Oh. Head pin full on, David. drop six. Drilled right into the head pin, and that's all he took out. Yep, it's all right. Gary Casey up on alley three, working on his spare fill. Oh, he wants that head pin to get the fill. And he's Ooh. wide right, but he's left the four hearts been left. Yep, with a piece of wood coming around to lock it in. As it rolls away, waiting for the wood to stop to see, hopefully it gets a little closer. Going to have to go in between the one and the two, as my partner has suggested, and uh, hopefully carries it out. Yes. yes, nice shot, nice shot. Heading quarter to the left. All four go down, nice spare. Nice back-to-back -back spares. He's looking to fill this. On that, uh, on that uh, shot, David, on the uh, four horsemen, about 35 to 40 percent of the time, we believe it's made. I think that's the national average. It is more of a difficult shot than it appears. It very well is a hair off and you're, you're taking three or you're even taking one. Oh, he's dis oh whoa, whoa, whoa. Maybe, so no, he threw a disappointing ball. He drilled into the six. Hey, buddy, took down six. He's left four. He's got a spare shot, David. Yep, he had a little bit of um, spin on that ball, which created that leave. Let's see if he can't pick this up. Oh, he missed the head pin. He wanted that head pin, just slid by it. He's left the one, the, the one four, ten for a ten box. With a lot of wood on the deck. He's going to have to spray it around. Oh, oh, wide right. Disappointing seven. All right, Steve Passant. 
up on alley three, box number three, trying to recover from two disappointing opening boxes. He wants to drill that head pin and the quarter. He found it. Yes, nice. there it hammer. is. There's the hammer. No doubt about it. Explosion. Last pin to fall down. D8 pin. Well, it took a little bit for the champ to wake up, but you know he finally dropped that hammer and now it's on his fills. Now he wants it again. Oh, wide right, but he's left the one and the seven. He's got some favorable wood. I believe he's going to drill right into the head pin. Hopefully the ball of the pin takes out the 10. Yeah, this may be some actually ugly wood, the way this dead wood is all set up. And he picked it up, nice, nice ball. Shot. Cleared everything right off the pin plate. Everything's into the pit. He thought he had missed it. Yo, yeah. but that dead wood kind of like helped him out a little bit. David, you never know when can open bowling. No, you, you never, never do. You never know. All right, Gary Casey up, zeroing in the focus on the head pin. No, missed it wide right, but David, he's left it decently. Maybe, 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 no. This time he goes to the left-hand side. Right. Leaves the one three, piece of wood up against the three. They'd like to get this mark. This wood isn't going to be a help. You have to go right at it. Wide left, he knows it. Would have been a good shot. Would have been a nice spear, but unfortunately missed wide left. Best thing you can do is pick it up for a 10. Well, he's got a nine bucks. Okay, he's going up to alley four. David, I just want to bring it to your attention and our outstanding producer and director, Travis Falk, that uh, I got to plead a Mia Culpa. On one of the previous a shows. Mia Peppa? Mia Culpa. I stated unequivocally that the distance between the pins was 12 inches. It is not, as Travis and you have pointed out to me. It's, whoa, he just dropped the nine, continuing quickly. Nice head pin shot. When the pins are up, it's nine, pin, nine inches between the pins. When the pins are removed, it's 12 inches. Yeah, well, you know. My error, my bad. Inches are everything in life. Oh, nice spare shot. Took down the seven, the one pinner made with a piece of wood. Okay, nice shot. Steve Passant up now on alley three, box five. His delivery, headshot, a little full on this one. Oh, he's left an ugly, ugly three pin split. The three, four, six. With wood, I don't know. I would think he'd try to bang the wood and the three pins, see what happens. Yeah, let's see if he can't use that dead wood. Yes, nice. yes, yes, it did. It appeared the wood ricochet. No, it was another piece of wood that took it out, not the ricocheted wood from the left side. It was a nice shot. What a nice shot. All right, yeah, he's got the confidence. He's got it going now. Wants that head pin for the fill. Wants to deliver a big fill ball. Got the head. There it nice. is. Nice. There yeah. it is. There's another hammer. There's the hammer on the spear. Completely obliterated all 10 pins. A great, great, excellent 10 pin fill on the spear. Absolutely. And after six, Steve Bazant with a score of 81 to Gary Casey's 68. Working on a mark. Let's see if Gary Casey can close the gap just a little bit. Well, Gary comes up and gets the third mark in a row. It'll really give him some moment, momentum. Oh, weak ball. Oh, whoa. Yeah, he's got that spin on his ball, so it's kind of weird. If he throws it a little bit to the right, you know, the pins seem to go to the left and help him out a little bit. He's left the one, the four, the five to say. He's got wood down there. Yeah, this is an ugly leave, though, with that five pin Gotta as a get sleeper. The head pin. Oh. He dropped it. He knew it. Frustrated. Well, his attempt to get three marks in a row. When Candlepin Bowling, we call the three marks in a row. Any type of mark spares or strikes an eagle. And he filled it with a nine, nine box. Last pin to stand is the five pin. Okay, disappointed that he, he left those four up there, but uh, he gave it a shot. Just unfortunately, just missed by the ball. Okay, he's up on alley four, ready to throw. Nice delivery. Oh, once again, the dreaded, or excuse me, half dreaded, <laughs> half Worcester right. Yep, the half Worcester. That. Left hand side. But David, it's your quarter. favorite shot. It is. He, oh, he made it. He did. He I, did what did make, I tell you? The left hand it. side. He did make it, David. Beautiful. That's you why I it. call it the beautiful, the prettiest shot that you can make. You call it, David. There it is. That's my favorite shot. Oh my goodness! What an excellent shot made with no wood. Steve Pazan bangs the head in, takes into the one three, wow. and only drops six. How does that happen? <laughs> That's unbelievable. Funny you should mention that. I know you are, you know, you've been throwing out challenges left and right to people out there who 
have physics knowledge and how does this happen? Well, Steve, I got a phone call the other night. Yeah. From a guy named Jonathan Mosbach. Yeah, yeah. And there was a six box there, did too. Of all things, yeah. he loved the show. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Spoke very highly of you. Yeah. And Thank myself. You. And one of the things that he happened to say was he was from Allentown, Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. That's a long way away from here, you know, and you know, he had a lot of great things to say and he said that he would love to come up during the next King of the Palace sometime in the fall to give it a shot, try his hand at it and offer you some insight on the wonderful world of physics. Well, I would I'd love to talk to the man. All right, he's going for a nine box. He got it, played the two safely on the left. Our outstanding producer of directive, Travis Falk, once again has extended an invitation to anybody who can explain that to me, and I still want to know well, how that spread eagle happens or one pin comes out and one time and one delivery. Okay. Gary Case delivers, head, head pin, pin shot. Oh, got, got a favorable head drop. drop. He well, won. you know, you threw it out there for so many times, and finally, you know, Jonathan sitting back on his couch late at night perusing the internet, found our website and found the move, the, the matches on YouTube, decided to call up and say, hey, you know what? I'll tell you. I may be able to help you out. He comes up here, we'll buy him a pizza. Oh, you cheapskate. Oh, maybe a fish dinner down at the uh, SS Lobster. All right, Gary Casey, disappointed with missing the two penna. Up on alley four, his last box. Had a nine box. Gonna zero in once again. You gotta get the head pin. I'm gonna tell you what though, it was kind of cool. Allentown, Pennsylvania. Watching had, us on the show. Yep, right? he actually even did an article in his local paper. Oh, no, well, I'll about us. Maybe we can get a, a copy of it. Pin I'm it working on, on the, it. Pin it up here on the wall here at the, the, the candle pin capital of the world. Yep, you know, maybe we can put it right up next to the, the one that the night that Sentinel Enterprise did that nice piece on mm -hmm. and the Lemonson Champion. Yeah. Here at the beautiful. King of the Palace Lanes down here in the New Palace Lanes, home of the King of the Palace Tournament here in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. That's right. Okay. Gary Casey Jr. finishing on Alley 4. Now Steve Passon up on Alley 3. Box number 9. Head pin, he found it! Oh, nice beautiful ball. shot. He has left the sixth pin. It's rocking, David. It's rocking. Yeah, but there's too much wood yeah. down there to make that thing fall over. He's got some nice wood. He should just drill right into the wood. Oh, absolutely. Spare. Plow through it. Oh, yeah. Nice no ball. doubt about it. Played it safe. It appeared, David, that time he let up a little bit on this ball delivery to make sure he got his arm. Yeah, uh, yo, yeah. he also didn't want to break the pins. The pins, yeah, that could be. That could be. <laughs> He's going to go after a big fill now. He wants a big fill. Oh, Ooh. wide right. Only took out four. Ugly oh, lead. Ugly, yes. I second. I that. think I'd rather prefer the, the half Worcester than that lead. Well, what's he got to do here, Dave? He's got to go try to split uh, and get the four on the left. Yep. Oh, he went after the head pin. Little four on the left. Get, he Wait did a get the little piece of wood rolling back. Oh, come on! Oh. No luck. Left the nine, took out the six. Yep. Left the nine pin for a ten point box, rolling wood. Once again, we instruct the viewers out there: you have to wait for the dead wood to. Remain stationary before nice we get the ball. He picked up the nine pin for the ten box, and then. Well, if you have to wait for it to be stationary, you'd be waiting around for a while. Uh, uh, after one match, Steve Pazant 128, Gary Casey Jr. 119. This is a straight up match, so there's no pins given. So this is going to be a tough fought match. Yeah, Gary Casey gonna really try to put on the pressure here. It's match number two. Gonna open up on alley number three. Wants to get that head pin. I think he's probably thinking about, unfortunately, missing that two pin, David. Yeah. That was, uh, what do you want it? Okay, Steve Poisson going to open up here on alley three, box number one. Yep, Steve's the returning champ. He, now he's ahead. Now he's looking to stay that way. Drills it. Head pin. Oh. Shot. Oh, he has he, left the four seven. He had that look on his face that, holy crap, that should have went. Should have been a strike, but he's got to show us a shot here to make a spare two pin up. Oh, yeah, nice, nice shot. Up. Once again, David, as you've alluded to in the past, he split the pins. He put the ball between the four and the seven. There's other thoughts of making it by playing the outside of the four, but it appears to be a safer shot to split. All right, he's loaded. Oh, Ooh, wow, he went way left. Oh, 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 they're falling. They're falling. Oh, oh five pin drop. Well, he's got the head pin up with some wood behind it. 
He's got to drill it. He, if he makes contact, I believe, David, with this yeah, the pocket, left, it may go. Left hand side should be bring him all. There oh, it goes. Yes, there they are. There it back is. Back to back spares. Why a way to open up the King of the Palace second round challenge in the opening matches. Nice shot, nice control, nice delivery. Up all now, right. Gary Casey looking to answer to Steve Bazan's double spares. Head pin. Head pin. Come oh. on, foul. Yes, yeah, he got the hammer. hammer. There it is. There's a Julian. Took a little longer than normal, but. Yeah, a Julian strike, a slow motion strike. Back door, the last pin to fall. The two pin. Yeah, he wanted it, it. He got it. He opened up for what he wanted. Now he's looking for the double. I think somebody was yelling timber in the background the way that thing was wobbling. Oh, wide right. Well, oh, he's still got another ball. Yes, candle pin bowling. Two balls uh, to make you feel calm. On the always strike. remember this. No matter if you get a strike or a spare, it's always a fancy 10 until you fill it. That's right. Absolutely correct. And, ooh, oh, ripped the middle. That right was not a good one. I thought he thought he had that one. He's, yeah, it looked yeah, like the look still, on his face, it was. Nothing wrong with an eight pin fill on a spare. Or no. A oh, well, this went down by the three. Eight pin box. Okay. Right now, Steve Bazant 153 to Gary Casey's 145. Match lead is eight. Steve Pisson up on alley three on a spig, on a fill. Got the head pin, and he's left an ugly three pin split, David. Yeah, you see him, you know, shake looked his up head. Looked up the sky, looked up into the ceiling. What have I got to do to get a decent fill, a spare shot with that ball? Here's an answer hit the pin. He just missed the spare. He was going after the object. Went wide left. He's got two left to fill it with a 10 box. I think you'll be happy here with getting one out of two. And he did. So he got a nine. He got a seven on the spill, on the fill, and a nine box. Okay, he's going to crank it up. Yo, know, just to mention, on May 17th, we're having a 10-string oh, yes. tournament. Yes, the 10 Friday night. Thirty-five dollars to enter. Should be a great time. No handicap, straight up. Straight up. He just threw another ball. Left the the uh, six and the ten on the right side. Corner shot. Going to yep. try to split them. There's been a lot of people asking, how come you and I haven't been able to do the King of the Palace because they want to see our mad skills. But our executive producer gave me the okay on Friday night, the 17th, to lace them up and throw them down. Well, there's a possibility that yours truly, the commentator, may take you up on that offer and go against you. We'll have to what, see if we can on the 17th? It. Yeah. I'd be looking forward to it. Would you be wearing the, the standard flag shorts? Uh, that's debatable. Oh, debatable. <laughs> come on. If you don't, if nobody's ever, ever seen Steve Bowl, he has the most outrageous outfit because he is so superstitious. He's got the same flag shorts from like 1950, the same tank top from like the 1950s, the same pair of socks, and the same pair of shoes. And it, last year he actually just retired his sponge that he had to keep his fingers wet for like the last 20 years. Oh, Gary Casey. Nice ball, Gary. Just, and he made the half whistle without the wood. David, you must be overjoyed with this. Twice we have seen a half whistle made. Very, very difficult shot with no wood. Yeah. And then to use your words, the kingpin had fallen. Oh, he's going to try to fill it with an 8, 9, or a 10. Let's hope he gets a double. Oh. Oh, nice ball. Bad luck. He's left the 3 7. Ugly wood. Well, Ugly. he should be able to, you know, right side of this. Yeah, he, three pin. Uh, it should drive it right back. Ted Williams once said, "The hardest thing to do is hit a round object with a round object and hit it square when and it's going it at you at 95 miles an hour." And I bet you he was talking about Caleb and Bowling because well, I'll tell you what, he might have done it. You know, David, we've always said the greatest bang for your buck for family entertainment is at the new Palace Lanes, Daniel Street in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. Candle pinball and at its finest. And you know, just so you know, it's just not promoting, you know, new Palace Lanes. It's oh, nice another, hammer. There is the hammer. He, he that's went, why he oh is the king. God. Are you kidding Did me? Did you see those there was, pins? There was like, somebody oh. must have, I bet you Wiley e. Coyote was down there with a stick of dynamite and just he like just hit the plunger and those things just pop. Going for the double, oh, a little weak on the right side. He's left four up for the spare. Goes, he should go after the head pin here. Maybe Head and quarter might take this off yeah. with that piece of wood in the back. The, the piece of wood's going to help. We believe. Ooh. Oh, he was wide left. So, as I was saying, yeah. it's, it's just not promoting the New Palace Lanes. Wait. It's promoting Candlepin Bowling. Oh, so, no matter where, where you're you at, what state you live in, or even Canada, the country, find a Candlepin Bowling house 
and enjoy it. Because mm -hmm. I tell you what, it is a hundred times harder than ten pin bowling. Oh yes. Oh, without a doubt. And I'll tell you what, I'll issue a challenge. Okay. To anybody that can do a ten pin bowling. Yeah. To come and try candle pin bowling, who's never done it before, because there are some people out there that have candle pin and have done ten pin, and are actually really good at Fine. it. We welcome anyone that David has put out there with that type of situation to come down, shake our hands, and we'll watch you bowl. It yep. would be interesting. Okay, Gary. And oh. We'll even give you pointers on how to do it. Okay, Gary going after the one eight nine. Nice yes. pick up. Nice shot. He needed it. Picked up the junk his, on the deck. His expression on his face, we know by eye contact, he was happy with it. He threw the ball where he wanted. He hit his object, and he got rewarded. He most certainly did. Now he's got to work he on his fill. It. He wants this fill. He wants the big ball in he's the pot. He's got to make up a lot of work. The concentration's there, David. He, got shot. It. he found it. Oh, Ooh. are you kidding me? Definitely. Yeah, look. Well, no, uh, that's just one e heck of an ugly lead. lead. That's how unbelievable. Did, how did he's got two pieces of garbage oh, I don't know. in you, front of the 8-7. You're going after the front wood or the wood behind I'm you? I'm spraying and praying because yeah. this wood is ugly. Oh. That's how ugly that wood is. It didn't matter which way you were going to hit it. He's, he's got to shoot the 8-pin for the... Uh, that's probably why he's not that upset about it because yeah. he knew that it was crap wood. He, and he picks it up for the tech. Nice, nice pin. Nice pin. After six, steep percent seventy-six to Gary Casey's eighty-one. Gary made up a lot of a lot of ground on Steve. Okay, he's gonna crank it up here. Box number seven. Steve working on a four-pin lead, and he's going left. Ooh, he's only took out the left side. He took out four in the left. He's left six for a, a tough spare. But I, if he throws a strike ball, it may carry. Oh, he thought he had it. He thought he had it. Once again, the injustice of, of candle pin bowling. How did the six pin stay up? Well, because Lady Luck looked at him and stuck her tongue out at him. I don't, That's how that happened. I will repeat my famous slogan. How, did this how does it happen? I cannot offer a clue. Okay, he's up on LV4. Throw the ball, David. See what happens. Hit your object. Okay, here he goes. Yeah, he missed the object. That time he did. <laughs> now he missed the object again, but he's left a favorable spare leave to sub the seven eight and the head pin he's got wood down there the wood are favorably rolling into the back this is very favorable yeah. wood all he's got to do is hit the head pin and and it should it should a shade off the cushion on the left and oh hey, yes no nope. no that eight pin is waggling it rocked it. it ain't going the two pound eight ounce pin stood up was not his favorite fan he's laughing at him he's laughing at him you can't knock me down because i weigh two pounds yeah. and eight ounces i'm 15 Inches and three quarters. And now you see that? Even with the roadblock. Even with the roadblock, he missed it. He's shaking his head. He's going to his towel. He's looking up in the sky. And still I don't shaking it. He's still shaking his yeah. head. How, how the heck did I miss that? Okay, Gary's getting his thoughts together here. Wants that head pin. Wants to drill that ball into the head pin and deliver that strike. He corner. got it. He got it. And the oh. five pin is still standing. The five pin and candle pin bowling, better known as wow, the king pin. Wow, look at that wood. Still rocking. It Three wasn't going to go. Three pieces of wood. It refused to go down. you got to make the spear, Gary. Oh, oh, that wood did not help him out. He, oh. I think he put a little extra padding on that pellet. Oh, a rope lock in a very tight time to miss. Nice pickup for a 10. He knew it. A lot of difference between a spare. I'm pretty sure if our executive producer had a bleep button, you probably would have yeah, heard it. Bleep, bleep, yeah, bleep, 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 bleep. Yeah. <laughs> Here he goes. He's trying to recover. Very good. Oh, and and caught a shot. Again. And David, there it is. There is the... It's called the diamond, folks, but Been during the tournament, there I mean, was an old schooler that was probably, you know, just about as old as Steve called it a dinner bucket. So apparently I was mistaken that it's called the dinner bucket back in like the 40s when they had wooden pins. He's picked up a 10. He's picked up a 10. Nice two pin. Okay. Steve well, Hassan, two pin in. lead right now. It's getting kind of tight for the Steve. The ninth box, the foundation box. Oh. Well, you know what? This is a scratch match, so we'll yeah. see if Steve's gonna crack. Oh, he knew he's disappointed. This is a pressure it. moment. He's got to get that head pin. He's got to find it. He's got it. Oh, 
And he's shaking his head again. What do I got to do? Ooh, left the six and the nine. Sometimes throwing a hard ball is great, but it also can be a hinder. One at the ten, but only took one out, so he's got a nine drop. All right. Alley ten, excuse me, box ten, alley four. In can of pin bowling, people, uh, we refer to the each individual time you bowl as a box, and it's also called a string. Other games, it's a frame and a game. Okay. Ooh, yes, 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 he nice. is on the tenth box with the hammer. It Left is a, hand side. It is a Julian. The well, last pin to fall is, is the three. Actually, yeah, kind of, sort of. Boy. He's it's there. a half a Julian. A half a Julian. If it was the head pin, it would have been what, David? A Jameson. A Jameson. Okay, yep. here he goes. He wants to get a good whiskey, too, by the way. Another one. Oh, heading he quarter. Oh, he's left the, appears to be the four oh, pin. With wood. With wood. Should be a pickup or a spare. This for might a be a kind of a tough pickup, because that wood is angled just enough away from it to cover it up. He oh, it didn't it. need it. Didn't need it. Put Break it in the, the crosshairs and mowed it down. All right, big last two boxes for Gary Casey Jr. to win the champ. Excuse me, to win the match. Continue on the championship round. Let's see what happens. He's going to need a couple marks. He needs that head pin. Little extra time there. He though. knows what he's got to do. No, oh, he's a veteran, veteran candle pin bowler. The concentration's there. Let's see if the ball delivers for him. Head, oh, oh, just off the heading quarter, yeah. leaving. A four horseman left. He's got some left. wood. Yep. The one, this three, might, six. This might be a seven. tough pickup. You, you one, you, two, six, seven. You, you say that you know, thirty-seven percent of the time, right. but that piece of wood in the back may hurt him. Oh, he missed it. He knows it. He knows. He's very disappointed. Well, you got to get the, the only ten. Thing standing. Got to get the ten. Got to get the ten. No, nope, missed it. Rolled right by it, unfortunately, to the left. All right. Last box for Gary Casey Jr. Probably thinking in the back of his mind, he's got to get at least one strike here to get him on a good roll to get a double to win the match. So let's see what happens. Yeah. Strikes are tough to come by, let alone get one. To get two is even more difficult. Yeah, very much so. It's tough. Oh, wide left. Okay. Left oh. the one, nine, ten. Let's see if he can't make a little bit of noise and, you know, Hopefully he drills the head pin and takes out the 9, the 10. He's got the wood down there. Uh, missed the object. Well, may roll back and take it. Nah, no. No. Helicoptering it. Yeah, the wood helicoptered one another. Missed it for the 9 box. Match is over. Steve Pazant that retains his title. And it continues on and for the king of the palace. After two, Steve Pazant wins the match by... A 13-pin lead, second st string score, 123 to 119. Another close match all the way around. Okay, looking at the score sheet, we find five spares for Steve Passant, four strikes, one strike for Gary Casey Jr., six spares for, excuse me, six spares for Gary Casey Jr., one strike. I think the difference was the strikes Steve Passant came up with for, and with good fills. Steve Pazant defeating Gary Casey Jr. in our opening match. Steve Pazant is on his way to defending his title, beating Gary Casey Jr. by the score of 251 to 238. Next week, Steve Pazant works his way back up the ladder against Billy Bloom. I'm looking for more great action from two great Candlepin bowlers. Looking forward to the action, David. We'll see you next week. We'll see you all next week.